morning everybody welcome back to today's video we are here in Cornwall Connecticut and the reason for us being here is because we are going to be reconning the Lime Rock epic route uh, that I'll be doing in October 9th so uh, we're gonna be taking our gravel bikes and uh, showing you what the course, what the route is going to be like. So where we're parked, we're at the Housatonic Meadows um, parking area. It's not the campground, but it actually, for those of you who did the Macedonia Gravel Grinder uh, event um, in late July, this is the third, this is the location of the third uh, aid station. So we're parked here um, and we're going to where we are on the route. We're actually on the bottom part of the bottom, the second half of the loop of the Lime Rock Epic route. Um, I'll put up a map and show you where we are. And we're going to start off doing two climbs. So that'll be a good warm up for us. Uh, before before we actually get started on the, the on the gravel part. I don't know if actually these two climbs are gonna be on gravel. So yeah, that's why we're doing this this recon so that we can see, uh, get an idea of what the roads are gonna be like. Are we clearing our rear? Car up. The Lime Rock Park Epic starts in Connecticut's Litchfield County and goes through the Berkshires. There are three routes available, the Epic, which is 68 miles, the Explorer, which is 44 miles, and the Express, which is 18 miles. The Epic and Explorer route will feature an Enduro-style timing, which takes into account the cumulative times of five segments, and the Epic route will have 13 gravel sectors, or over 50% of which is unpaved. Not entirely sure what I've signed up for, but this recon will help me determine gearing, hydration, and feeding strategy. Morning. Go that way. Oh. Yeah. Time to wake the legs up. Since we started our ride at the second half of the loop, we encountered this climb one mile from where we parked. In the course map, this climb is approximately 10 miles from the finish line, and it was a grind just to get up it, but luckily it was paved. Hey, bunny. I don't know. I thought it said Uh, it includes the flat part, I think. So, it's more of like a half mile climb. Oh, this would not be kind of After descending, we approached another climb that's just shy of 1.5 miles. The average grade is a little more subtle at 6.3%, but its length can definitely tire out the legs. Oh, this is too, this is gradual. Okay, so I made a mistake. It's the first climb that 
is steep. It's about half a mile. And this one's pretty gradual. I'll go. Fortunately for mere mortals such as myself, there was a fun descent to look forward to since you can probably tell from my top tube bag that it's already dripping with sweat. River Road is up, clear in our ear. section is going to turn into gravel. Just got to be careful when descending there because it's kind of hard to see River Road. I'm sure they'll have signs and arrows. So this dirt road is a uh, pretty tame. There are some sandy sections and a couple of railroad crossings. Car up. Pretty tame gravel over here. You just have to be careful. Because there are some uh, sandy sections on both sides, on, on the edges. Um, we're running slicks, slick tires. Well, it looks like they just did some work on this. I'm running the uh, Maxxis refuse tires, and Jason is running the uh, Maxxis Velocitas. we entered a section of gravel on River Road, which will be the last section of gravel on the course. The gravel starts out sandy along the edges and mostly packed dirt at the center. However, a mile or so down the road, it turns into crushed rocks that rattle dust around. Be careful with surprise potholes also. Hey guys, so... Like Joy said, we are reconning the route for this Lime Rock Epic Race that Joy's going to do in October. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to participate in the actual event, 
because I have to work that weekend. But it's still fun to get out here and check the route out. And it's bringing back some memories because some of these roads we are up, some of these roads we've ridden on during our tour of Connecticut. But now we get to ride it without a 50 pound bike. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, this road is, uh, it, it's, it's washed moldy in spots and fairly smooth in other spots. It's hard to tell which one it's going to be. It's hard to see the, the little micro bumps. We're met with a climb. Oh boy. And then after this, we'll hit up Twin Lakes. To spare you guys the heavy breathing, I'm going to turn off the camera. Oh, it's hot. Uh, that was hot, hot, hot. All right, so we're, I hope so. Team the Lakes Road. I'm going to go through Twin Lakes now. This should be a pretty decent gravel road. I hope. That's what I've been saying, actually. What? Oh, was that a squirrel? I thought it was a rock. The descent on Between the Lakes Road was fairly smooth. There were some sections that tossed us around, but otherwise the terrain was pretty tame. Time we rode on on this road it was uh, overcast hey it's sunny you can see the lake a little better i think today so far we're not impressed by these gravel roads they're quite a bit bumpier than the ones that we normally, or the ones that we rode on closer to home that are, that we rode on for the Macedonia Gravel Grinder. And so far, most of these are pretty bumpy. The river, I think River Road wasn't too bad, but... This one that we're on now, I'm not sure of the name of the road, but it's uh, it's got a lot of loose, small loose rocks. Got off that horribly bumpy road. Now we're on another dirt road, which I'm not really sure yet what this one's gonna be like. It has, looks like it has the potential to turn into some rocky double track, which it's starting to do right now, actually. side of the road here but this is the better line looks like yeah this is kind of like a deep road
Okay, now it looks like the right side is better. Sometimes the middle is better. This is one of those that you have to just keep looking for the best line. Careful with the uh, debris on the road, the little branches. Actually, this is better though than riding on that bumpy stuff. Yeah. Feels almost like you're feels almost like you're riding on top of water or something. Bobbing up and down. Uh oh. Clear. Oh, it's, oh it's, the road actually continues, but still called Giberson. Yeah. But now it's like, okay, now it's back to uh, bumpy crap. Oh, no. Yeah, this is why they have bloody hands afterward. So we're at our second, uh, our first stop here at the Egremont Market. We're in Massachusetts now, by the way. And uh, this took a little bit longer than I thought we were going to get to this location. Um, I thought in Ride the GPS it's about 28 miles or so to get here, but it actually turned out to be 32 miles, so a little longer than I wanted because um, I was starting to run really low in water. Uh, thank goodness we got we found this place because now we can refuel. So uh, yeah, roads so far, the, the gravel is a little more uh, bumpy than than I'd like. So if you have a suspension fork, um, we are running the Lauf anywhere, and I wish that we had the Lauf True Grit with the uh, you know with the leaf spring fork because it could really you know you could really benefit from those roads um, using that. It's very bumpy. Um, there was a very short section of a road that was hard packed dirt and it was pretty comfortable to ride on, but the rest were just like potholes or um, a lot of the farm roads, which I think the tractor trailer tires kind of go over it and which makes it, gives it that washboardy feeling. So anyway, that's the story for now. I'm gonna try to eat a little bit more and then we're gonna climb Mount Washington now not Mount Washington in New Hampshire this is Massachusetts um, but it is a three mile climb Right, right. Yes. Well, so I got done with uh, 
drinking enough water to get us going again. This road is Mount Washington Road and it is a three mile climb and I think it is paid. Which is a good thing because that gravel road was pretty rough on my hands and my elbows. We had to stop here because my seat post for some reason dropped a little bit and I could feel it and my knees were kind of bothering me. So I meant to fix that at the um, at our first stop but forgot to. So we're stopping here to do it and there's bugs everywhere. And uh, yeah, we're approaching, well, we started climbing, three mile climb. I'm not looking forward to it because it is pretty sunny, uh, kind of exposed section of the road there. And I don't do well in the heat. So I'm gonna have to take it easy. So we're doing the uh, Mount Washington State Park climb and like Joyce said earlier, it's not, thankfully it's not Mount Washington, New Hampshire. It's, it's uh, Massachusetts and I believe this, from what we've seen so far, this Mount Washington is pretty mild. Yeah, so to be honest with you, I'm not crazy about the gravel roads so far on this route. Um, some of them have been very bumpy, which to me just makes it less com less enjoyable to ride on. Um, so hopefully we'll hit some more along the way that are a little smoother. Makes me appreciate some of the gravel roads that we have nearby where we live, though. Uh, now I realize that those are actually pretty smooth roads. Yeah, I I wasn't gonna say that, but like now that you bring it up, I'm I'm actually not as sad about missing this one as I was initially. I know that's kind of crappy to say, but... No, I wouldn't. I would not be sad. Because so far, I mean, it's a mix of... I guess it's kind of... I have to try to... Yeah. Jason said, this turns into gravel. for less than half a mile to the very top. You can see him, he's like bright green dot up ahead. Okay. Oh, the sun is beating down. All right, gravel. Pictures up and then flat and then a downhill. Pretty decent gravel road here so far. Uh, yeah, definitely not as bumpy. Much more hard path. Don't be fooled once you get to the top because it's not quite a downhill. Instead, there are many rolling hills that are steep before descending Mount Riga Road. Holy cow, switchback. Where did you go? Right or straight? Oh, dang it.
I thought it was a switchback. This is one of the handful of steep climbs at the top. Okay, half a mile climb. Saw a sign. We're on Mount Riga Road now. Saw a sign that said steep, narrow, and unimproved road. So this, yeah, steep road. Bumpy. This section is pretty rough. The roads were dry, sandy, and rocky. There were a few cars that drove past us in the opposite direction that kicked up dirt, and when they did, it affected our visibility. We have a steep descent coming up. Sorry, I thought we had a seven mile descent. And uh, based on what Rise of GPS showed, but it seems as though this is not a true descent. It's like up and down, but the general direction of the uh, route is going down. It's just that there's a lot of these undulations. You know, that's not really gonna carry you all the way down to the there's no relief from pedaling, I guess. Left turn coming up. this but this is kind of what we 
came across here, um, there's like ripples along the, the road here and it really uh, shook us up. So we had to stop here. What is going on with this thing? Uh, we had to stop here for a little bit to pick up a few items that bounced out of my top tube bag. Um, it just rattled us because of uh, this Mount Riga road descent is really bumpy. Definitely has a lot of like ripples and like Jason said and um, you know the up and down motion of the bike. Uh, can't really go too fast I guess or just make sure that everything is secure especially your water bottles um, when you're descending this because it def that's, things will definitely fall out. Looks like uh, 48 miles into the ride. We're doing about 70 miles I think the actual route for the event is only 68 miles, but um, our route is a little bit different because we had to park at a different starting point. Uh, so yeah, another thing that's making this descent challenging is there's actually a... Uh, yeah, thanks. There's actually a decent number of cars on this road and uh, every time one passes us it kicks up a bunch of dust which a while back there I got into my eyes uh, anyway that's another thing to be careful of um, yeah I think Joy mentioned that it's gonna be more climbing than what Rido GPS says it is um, so we're 48 miles in and 4800 feet uh, so I'm assuming if we continue with that pattern, it's going to be, I mean, even if the climbing slows down a little bit in the last 20 miles, um, we're probably still, uh, I think we're probably still going to hit 6,000 feet rather than the advertised 5,500 or so. After descending Mount Riga Road, we stopped at Laban's Market for refreshments and hopped onto this trail. It's easy to miss this trail as there weren't any signs, but you'll see a single track leading to it. Thank you. More bumpy climbs. I should have taken that rail trail. No, it wasn't. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know. I wanted to get the momentum. All right. Because we started the bottom portion of this course, we are getting close to where we park. So hopefully you guys get a good glimpse of the gravel. Uh, yeah, it's a mixed bag and I think it's pretty challenging for me who's not, uh, you know, who doesn't do gravel events. Lime Rock Epic will be my third gravel event. And so it, comparing it to the previous events that we've done, um, we've done the Farmer's Daughter and recently the Macedonia Gravel Rider. This has to be the most, cha the most challenging of them. Just, because, just by the, the, the gravel, the conditions of the gravel. Bump. And uh, especially over in um, yeah, going into Massachusetts, the gravel is definitely a lot more um, technical and bumpy. And I, I was saying to Jason that I think I have like calluses in my uh, on my left palm because of the washboard conditions of these roads. By the way, this is a descent. So there's a potential that this could be a set. We made it. Check out my palms. I don't know if you guys can see how red it is. Oh, it's only my left palm for some reason. Make sure you wear gloves because, oh, I have a feeling that it's gonna turn into a callus. I wasn't too feeling, I wasn't doing great in the first half because um, it was just really hot and the sun was like beating down on us on that Mount Washington climb. Uh, so anyway, but one more thing before I forget is I'm considering now switching, swapping out my chain ring, uh, possibly to a 40. Um, we have the 38 at home, but I'd, maybe the 38 is too spinny, but definitely uh, probably a 40 because this is a lot of climbing. Um, it said 5,500 feet on the actual um, route itself that they put up on Ride with GPS, but it's definitely more than 5,500 feet. Yeah, that was another uh, tough, long gravel ride. I uh, always feel... I always end up feeling beat up after these long gravel rides. I, mean, I guess any long ride beats you up, but there was that descent, I forget the name of the road, Mount Riga, Mount Riga descent where I felt almost like my brain was getting sloshed around inside my skull. I got kind of like nauseous and dizzy after that. I'm still kind of dizzy now, ever since then. I was feeling pretty good up until that point, but Got the ride done. Uh, feels good to get it done. And um, looking forward to getting home, taking a shower, and having a nice dinner. Faster than the speed of light. We stretch time.
you found this video helpful in planning for this event, and maybe I'll see you at the start line. Until next time, don't forget to enjoy the ride. And I, I, I'm not gonna talk.